Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. If you're watching this video, then that means you found my GitHub repository for my CS330 class. Uh, and specifically, this video is going to be about my CS330 final project. Now, CS330 was a class about computer graphics and visualization, specifically using the OpenGL library for C++. And so all of the programming that I have in the repository is based off of the OpenGL library and uses a couple different headers like the um, stbimage.h and of course the camera.h uh, headers in order to control the camera. Um, but for the most part, most of the uh, programming is of my own design from uh, taken from various sources and various uh, examples, tutorials, and then of course uh, a little bit of my own uh, designing for how all of the methods are implemented, uh, specifically about how to encapsulate and make the whole thing modular. Uh, so you can see a little bit more in the documentation if you are on the GitHub page, you can find the documentation folder here, and you'll see the PDFs for the guidelines of the project and then my final reflection on the project, basically what I uh, said uh, about putting the whole thing together. Uh, but the idea was that this project was meant to be part of a larger uh, subset of, or larger set of projects, um, as you can see here, starting with 1-1, all the working, working all the way down to the final project of 7-1, and it was done in stages, uh, so it was meant to learn kind of OpenGL, but also the overall goal of the whole project was to kind of also flex our um, problem solving muscles a bit and maybe get, help us get a little bit more creative with how we put code together. Uh, so it started off with simple creating triangles, working up to 3D and then adding textures and then lighting and then finally a final project which uh, was based off of an image that we took at the very beginning of the class. And so this was my image. Uh, I kept it simple at first because I wanted to ensure that I could in fact recreate these objects in 3D space. Uh, and so you can see I've got a little mug and a Rubik's Cube and a pen sitting on top of my Wacom drawing tablet and, of course, some uh, candies here just because. Um, but early on in the project, I realized that I was able to do a little bit more than just this. So I ultimately create, took some creative liberties with my final project and the final version of this, and you'll see that in just a second when I run it. Uh, but I added a few shapes in there and moved some things around. I definitely played with the lighting a little bit more, stuff like that, uh, just because I wanted to really give it more of a, I don't know, a, a polished feel, a feel of a little bit more interesting things going on than just this simple basic scene. So uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, so here it is, the final project 3D scene, and we'll just go ahead and run it real quick so you can see what I've got going on here. All right, all right, so this is the final scene, as you can see. I've made a few changes um, to specifically the mug itself, and then of course the placement of the objects, even the Rubik's Cube textures, and then I added that plant in the background too, just because. Um, so a couple things that you may see here that are also different is that texture that it's sitting on for the table is not my countertop, it is a different texture. I've also added a few other interactive features in here too, so we'll start with those. Um, let's look at the uh, lighting. So you notice there is a white cube kind of circling above that is one of the lights that I designed for this. Uh, and the other light is further up above. You can't see it. It's hidden, but it is making everything kind of bathed in this purple glow. Now you can turn that on and off with the brackets, the left and right bracket will do, will, will turn that uh, purple light off and on. Uh, so you can see that the rotating light definitely changes the lighting effect on each one of the shapes as it rotates around, or revolves around the screen, I should say. Revolves, not rotates. Um, I added some uh, camera motions here, so the WASD keys will move you forward, backwards, left and right, straight and left and right, and then Q and E will move you up and down, um, so you can get a little bit more feel for the scene itself, moving around within it. Additionally, uh, I wanted to give that rotating light a little bit more, <clears throat> excuse me, interactivity. And so the left and right alt buttons on either side of the space bar will stop it from, sorry, revolving around. So right alt stops it and left alt starts it again. Uh, but additionally, I took the WASD um, feature from the left hand side of the keyboard and incorporated it into the right hand side of the keyboard with uh, I, J, K, and L. And so for the same thing, you can kind of move it forward, backward, side to side, and then with U and P, you can move the light up and down. And I did this so that you can kind of see how the light affects the different objects moving it around the scene like this. And so you can see the shadows 
uh, definitely playing on one another and, and uh, the light itself uh, changing around within the scene. Uh, so that goes like that. And then you can also, wherever you place the light, you can start it up again, uh, start up its uh, revolution again around the scene. Uh, additionally, <clears throat> just to make it a little bit more uh, interesting for the average viewer to kind of take a look at, uh, I included not just the solid models, but also the wireframe models of the uh, individual 3D models. So if you use the left and right arrows, you can change it to a wireframe mode. And it may not look like it's wireframe for some of them, but that's just because I use so uh, much density in the vector creation. So you can see here with the pen, it is actually, in fact, a wireframe model. Um, but what I did was I, if for this, and I'll show that algorithm in just a second, but for the cylinders that make up this pen, um, I set them at something like a, I don't know, like 240 or something, or something like that. So there's 240 individual vector points making up that particular cylinder right there for that pen. Uh, likewise for the coffee mug. And the idea for that was to make the higher resolution model uh, so that it seemed a lot more smoother. And you can see some of the uh, tricks that I used in here. So for instance, for the handle on the coffee mug, it's just simply a torus uh, that it goes in a complete circle, but half of it is hidden within the mug anyways. So that, you know, it's, it looks like a handle. So uh, those were some of the tricks that I used. Additionally, the texture for this uh, Wacom tablet it looks like there's a lot of shadow on here, or it looks like a uh, like three-dimensional space going on here, but in reality, it's more of kind of just a, a 3D bump map, uh, almost like a, a normalized texture. And you can even see here at the edge, this is just basically a flat cylinder that goes in a, uh, you know, a hard corners here, but uh, you can't really tell from a distance. And then even from the side, you can see that it is, in fact, just flat. It is uh, all it was was designed to give the illusion of three-dimensional space. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, and then finally, you can change the perspective mode uh, with the V and B button. So you can change from uh, orthogonal to just normal perspective back and forth. And so, of course, you can see in this 3D space, everything is uh, all stretched out and kind of weird looking. Uh, but back with the letter V and puts it back into normal 3D space. Uh, so that was um, that was my final project. And so let's take a look at the code in a little bit more detail uh, in my next video. If I can get that going. Uh, so hopefully uh, that was kind of cool for you to see. And I will show you a little bit more about what's under the hood uh, in the next video.